Oh yeah, you see, it's just about done. Look how piping hot it is. They serve 3,000 of these whole lobsters every Wednesday night. This is Las Vegas. Over 600,000 people live in this city, and millions more visit each year for some fun sightseeing and even some fun food adventures. Who doesn't like Las Vegas? Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater, and in this video, I'm gonna be taking you on one of my epic 96-hour trips to Las Vegas, Nevada. In this full documentary, you will see some of the best places to eat and the best things to see, along with a great place to stay when you are in town. This is the full experience. So get ready for a fun show because this is one of the biggest Las Vegas food and travel videos you're gonna find anywhere on YouTube. And also if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't wanna miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that being said, let's go to Las Vegas. The Las Vegas trip starts with dinner at Kaiseki Yuzu, which is one of the greatest Japanese restaurants in Vegas. It is a fine dining experience that specializes in Kaiseki. So if you are looking for a fine dining Asian restaurant in Las Vegas, especially around the Chinatown area, then Kaiseki Yuzu is one of the restaurants that you absolutely need to check out. So this restaurant has only been around for a few years and they're already getting such great reviews from customers who came here. Once again, it's Kaiseki. And if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like omakase, like you know what you find in sushi restaurants where the chef gives you the sushi and course meal, but it's not just sushi. It also incorporates hot foods, cold foods, appetizers, all the way to the desserts. It's an ancient form of Japanese dining that began all the way back in the 16th century as part of a tea ceremonial meal. And now it has evolved to something that is just so grand in Japanese cuisine, which is why I'm always so excited to eat it. And it's worth noting that there are three different price points. You could begin with the Chiku Kaiseki, which is 10 courses, very nice. This one is about 165 tonight. And this one in the center is the Show Kaiseki, $210. You get better stuff, I guess. Or you could go with the Special Gaiseki, which is $260, and that's the one I'm gonna go with, uh-huh. And so it begins. This is the Zenzai, which is the first of the course meal. Five assorted items that highlight the season, and all of these are seasonal produce. And all this fish comes from the Toyosu market in Japan. That is so awesome. So that one right there is the Sweet Shrimp Truffle. Oh, that looks really good. And that one is the Ayu Sweetfish from Japan. And then that little cup is the Mazoku, which is a uh, kelp. And this one is the King Salmon Hokkaido Uni with Ikura. And that little thing is Hokkaido Scallop Cake. Never heard of that before. And I heard that this bamboo is placed here. You're not supposed to move it because I guess it's supposed to be good luck or something like that. So these little bowls underneath, I'm just gonna have to maneuver my way inside to eat this stuff. Whoa. Wow, that shrimp is so good. That's amaebi, which is sweet shrimp. But I don't think I've had it like this before because it's been kind of diced up and it has that truffle flavor. Mm-hmm. Okay, when you taste something like that, you know you're in a fine dining restaurant. Mm. Wow. That ayu is so amazing. You know, when you taste it, you're like, yeah, that's really good Japanese food, but then you taste some dishes that's like, yeah, that actually does taste like something I remember from Japan. That's it right there. And I noticed that there's a piece of uh, 24 karat Gold flake in there, okay, fancy. Mm, it's like so sweet. It's sweet and kind of has like a, a pleasant sliminess. I don't think I've had a sushi that looks like this. It's like so rectangular.
Okay, so that sushi tastes like something from a really nice sushi restaurant. Salmon just melts in your mouth. And there's also the uni and ikura on top of it. So that's a pretty high-end sushi dish that I just got. Oh, wow. Wow, that's good. Mm, kind of has like that smoky flavor of the Hokkaido scallop. So far, I am very impressed with first course. I can't wait to see what else is coming out. So here is course number two. This is the otsukuri, which is the sashimi. Look what we got here. We got otoro, which is that pink colored one, the uh, tuna belly. And that one to the bottom left is the Thai snapper, Japanese. And that one to the right is the uh, Japanese beltfish. And then check this out. It gets even more interesting. That right there is uh, yuzu foam. It has like a citrusy flavor. You're supposed to take this and put it on top of your fish as a garnishment. Wow, that's so cool. And uh, house soy sauce. What's to kind of have like a bonito flavor. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with the toro and I'm gonna put some of this foam on top, which looks so good. Wow. Yeah, it really brings out like a citrusy flavor. Almost like putting lemon juice on it in some ways. Okay, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. This is one of the best tasting snappers I've had. It's like not overly chewy and it is, it's like a pretty nice crunch to it, but so soft at the same time and so fresh. All of this is amazingly fresh. And I think this beltfish is gonna be outstanding too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one is definitely very crunchy, but still very fresh tasting and kind of smoky too. All right, this is a very good platter. I'm loving it. Course number three, this is the Yakimono, which is great A5 Wagyu grilled over a bincho tan, topped with truffles, foie gras, and some vegetables on the side. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that is seriously one of the best piece of beef I've ever had in my life. Now I've had a lot of top grade beefs. So like I had Kobe beef, I've had Wagyu beef before and barbecue and shabu shabu restaurants, but I don't think I've had anything like this before. And there's that one piece of foie gras that's like right over there. Whoa, whoa that foie gras is so good. Woo! I want to like this. I just want to give a standing ovation. This is so good. Okay, I think this might be my favorite dish so far, but we're only on the third one, so there's still more to come. This is course number four called the Hiyashi Zara, which is cold udon noodle imported from Northern Japan. See, this is all good stuff. Topped with Hokkaido uni, ikura, clam, Hokkaido scallop, and shrimp. And another thing I like about these restaurants are the plates. I mean, look how nice they look. Yeah, definitely props on the presentation. Mm-hmm. Oh. Those noodles are so refreshing. I've had uni pasta before, but I think this is the first time I've had uni soba. So even when you come to a Kaiseki restaurant, they could take simple noodle dishes like soba and make it taste like a million bucks. You better believe it. And this one is called the Kawari Zara, which is grilled lobster, snapper, and squid wrapped with cabbage. And there is that house-made lobster sauce on the side. And I like how they light this thing on fire. So there is a little bit of a show with your meal, I guess. I mean, paying $260, you should get a lot, right? Okay. Wow, that lobster is so fresh. And I like how there are other seafoods in here too, like this squid, which I know it's gonna be very good. I just know. Mm-hmm. Whoa, that squid is not what I expected. Because when I had squid in the past, it was crunchier, I think. But this one is very tender. So tender. I don't know what they do to it, but so delicious. And I love the smoky flavor to it. 
perfect. So far, this has been such a delightful meal. And here we go with course number six. This is called the agemono, which is beef tempura. You can kind of see it behind there. 14 day dry aged uh, New York prime strip. That is high quality stuff. And then we got the halibut wrapped around carrot. And this one's pretty interesting. You see that foam? That's a tempura sauce that's been made into foam. Beef tempura. I don't remember if I've had it before. That's so interesting and it tastes great too. But I'm so fascinated with this tempura foam. That's like the only thing I'm thinking about right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like so tender. And that foamy sauce that goes on top of it, you can really taste the tempura sauce in that foam. It is so crazy. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, you're not gonna find this anywhere else outside of Las Vegas, I'll tell you that. And course number seven, almost getting to the finish line. This is the Sunomono, which is seared bluefin tuna, topped with dehydrated yuzu and sesame ponzu sauce. It's been seared really nicely on the outside. The inside, very soft, very clean tasting. What can I say, it's wonderful. I mean, everything up to this point, it's been fabulous. Oh, okay, that's the hand roll. So cool. Wow. Okay, that's like the perfect sushi hand roll. Just like that, the hand roll is gone. This is the golden eye snapper to the left. And to the right is called the grunt fish. I don't know what it is, but it kind of looks like a halibut. And this is a miso soup. And I'm assuming since we're in a kaiseki, it should taste pretty different. I don't eat the golden eye snapper that often, but whenever I do, it's pretty good. And I was right. Oh yeah, that fish is really fresh. Mmm. And one of the things that you notice about kaiseki is that it's not just about the taste, it's also a visual presentation. So you're eating with both your tongue and your eyes. Oh, that warms your soul. And by the way, it is a little bit hot today I'm in Vegas. <clears throat> Whenever they give you soup, it pretty much tells you that your meal is done. And pretty much finishing off with course number 10, which is dessert. We got some uh, vanilla bean gelato, and that one is blueberry mousse cake. And that one is house made whipped cream and got some fresh strawberries. Mm hmm. Like a very nicely made vanilla ice cream. Oh, yeah. And this one is something different. So, this is not an ice cream, but this is a little piece of blueberry cake. It's like a very light blueberry flavor. And it's, uh, it's basically a cake and it tastes great too. It is expensive, so it's not cheap eats. This is one of those restaurants that you would come for a special occasion, but it's definitely worth it. It's a visual treat. It tastes so great. It's so artfully presented. Service is great. There's free parking. Of course, you need a place to stay in Vegas too, right? Why not consider Tahiti Village, which is a resort south of the Vegas Strip. It is known as the best family-friendly hotel and resort in Las Vegas, with many great swimming pools on site. So if you're planning to come to Las Vegas with a family or perhaps with a group, then Tahiti Village is definitely a good place to stay, especially if you are into that Polynesian vibe. It's pretty cool. Oh, I'm so excited to show you guys this. Wow, what did I tell you? Look at the ceilings. This really does remind me of when I went to Hawaii. It's very similar design. It is also worth mentioning that they do have shuttles here, which is pretty rockin'. Tropicana, Mirage. Look at all these times that they could take you to those destinations. And they even have grocery shuttle pickups, okay. So in the lobby area, they do have some eateries like the Village Cafe, where if you want uh, really quick breakfast items, snacks, they got it here. 
from the muffins to danishes, and they even have ice cream. Okay, what about eating some ice cream at nine o'clock in the morning? Isn't that a treat? What would a hotel resort be without a gift shop? <laughs> Vegas has a lot of gift shops where they'll sell things like t-shirts. Oh, you definitely need this. It gets cold in Vegas in December, January, February, yikes. The Allegiant Stadium is here in Vegas, so this is where the Raiders play out of. Exciting! Look at all that merchandise. Uh, obviously, they're going to have their drinks as well, all the different soda. And you can also buy these things to take to your room because it does have microwave full kitchen. So you can get like lasagna, macaroni and cheese. And of course, spoil yourself with some ice cream. Oh wow, this is pretty cool. I like this. Reminds me of being on an island somewhere in the Caribbean's Pacific. And when you walk out of the gift store to the left, you're already at an eatery. How exciting. It's like all conveniently located in the lobby. It's kind of hard to see, but look, 16 all the way to 34. It's not cheap eats, guys. Looks like you can have a good time even in the lobby area, but that's not all, folks, because once you get out of the lobby, this is where all the action is at. Out here, all the pools and the lazy river. Even have this pretty cool section where they have all these grills laid out. Yeah, so you can have your own barbecue here if you want. Isn't that pretty rocking? Summer barbecue sounds really good to me right now. Look at that, you got the sink and everything. I love it. And if you just want to be out and about playing on some finely cut grass they got this seating area maybe children can play around here have a nice picnic and it is right next to the lazy river over there and here is what is no doubt the biggest attraction at tahiti village which is the lazy river oh man i used to love coming to lazy rivers when i was a kid let's see how cold the water is oh oh it's actually very warm Okay, now I see. It is heated. That's why people swim here during the winter time. Now it makes complete sense. Look at that. They even have this really huge jar that pours water out as you're swimming in this uh, lazy river. The lazy river is not a very big lazy river, but it's not a small one either. If you decide to come during the winter time, you should be good because it is a warm water they got here. But once you come out of the water, uh, you don't want to stay out for way too long. But in the summertime, of course, all the pools are going to be open. It's going to be nice and hot. You can hang out here, have some drinks. It's going to be an awesome time. One last thing I got to show you before I give you the room tour is the arcade. And just want to note that you do need to have your room keys to get in anywhere around this facility. Woo! Look at that! How fun! This is something I would have so enjoyed doing in Las Vegas when I was back in elementary school, maybe even junior high and high school, is to play all these arcades. And let me tell you, back then, arcades were only 25, 50 cents a game. Oh, how time flies. I don't think I'll be doing any of this today, but still, brings back some good memories. If you guys are into arcades, they got a lot of games for kids. Remember, very family friendly. And these are all the rooms to the left and to the right. This one is mine right here. Card key in. Wow. Yeah, it's actually quite big, isn't it? It's pretty nice, right? TV to the left. And you got the sofa. Two sofas, actually. Can have a nice hangout time. And we got like a little mini kitchen here with the sink. And they do give you stuff like this, dishwasher soap. All right, good to go. And some coffee, coffee maker, and microwave. So yes, if you get some of those microwavable foods at that uh, market out there, you can certainly heat it up in here. Okay, got also a fridge as well to keep all your water and drinks. You're gonna need it in Vegas. Of course, the bathroom. All right, that's pretty nice, huh? Oh yeah. I always love coming into hotels. They have all these nice towels ready. They have the lotion and they have shampoo. And then of course the room itself, voila. There is the bed. 
that I was sleeping at just last night. It's a little bit of a dark room. I don't know if you guys can see, but it is very nice. It's a very spacious unit, and my room does have a TV too. So of course, they're gonna have different room sizes like studio, one bedroom, they even have two bedrooms. I wanna mention that I'm staying with some traveling companions, so this isn't all there is to this unit that I got. This is actually part of a two bedroom unit and this is my section, but I wanna show you the uh, center section. When the door opens and then you have all this. This is even brighter than my room. Wow, this is the whole living room. Isn't that impressive? This is a much bigger kitchen. See, they got everything from the oven, they have the microwave, and this is a full on refrigerator where you can have freezer items. And yes, I have a lot of leftovers I get to that right there. And even a toaster, I see you back there. If you're gonna stay here for a long time and you have clothes you need to wash, check this out. They got a washer and dryer. Very, very nice. All right, I'm digging this. So this is definitely a resort that you can stay at for quite a while and not have to worry about laundry. First meal of the day is a brunch buffet at Nene Gloria, which is one of few Filipino buffets you'll find in Las Vegas. It is located in Chinatown and offers one of the most affordable all-you-can-eat buffets in Vegas at $17.99 a person. Now here is an Asian buffet that you don't find very often. So if you're looking to try something adventurous, as well as something that's very affordable and delicious, then Nene Gloria is really gonna be your awesome Filipino spot. Since this is a buffet, they're gonna be cooking a lot of this food. And behind me is a whole pot of beef caldereta. This is like the most beef caldereta that I think that I've seen cooked in the kitchen. See, they really mass produce this stuff. I mean, this is uh, really like cooking for a whole banquet or something. All right, so this is the entire buffet line. Alice is gonna to explain to us what everything is. She's camera shy, so you're only gonna hear her voice. So what is this one? All right, chicken curry. The ingredients is um, coconut milk and uh, uh, curry powder, tomato and the carrots, and we have a bell pepper and red bell pepper. Got it. Ooh. And the beets too. Caldereta beef, the special here. The beef, the potato, red bell pepper, and the tomato sauce, the red one. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, and that one is a uh, tapa, the beef tapa, the a little bit uh, fried, and then the. They put the garlic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one is a uh, pork picadillo. We put the carrots, the pot, uh, potato, and the raisin. Okay. And tomato sauce. And this one is good. The sweet one, the longanisa and the tocino. Okay, I've had that. All right. And this one is a uh, paxil lechon. Lechon? Uh, yeah, lechon paxil. Mm -hmm. uh, the ingredient is. Um, vinegar and uh, we put uh, a little bit of sugar okay and then this one is a uh, apretada chicken you see that the carrots the potato and the red bell pepper same like uh -huh. and the fried egg fried egg yeah okay and, and that one is a uh, garlic fried rice garlic fried rice got yeah. it yeah palabo noodles uh -huh. Yeah, the shrimp and the boiled egg and the, a little bit sauce and the inside is noodles also. Oh, okay. Yeah, yummy. And that one is uh, noodles, the bihon, we call it bihon. That's the special here. Okay, that's not a pancit? Yeah, pancit bihon. Oh, yeah. okay, got mm -hmm. it, got it, okay. And we have also the beef steak, beef with onion. Uh-huh. And we have also the kare kare, they put a peanut sauce and a lot of vegetable there. This one is uh, the chick meat and the tripe. Yeah, and this one is a lentil soup. We call it mongo beans. Mm -hmm. This is mongo beans, okay? And I have also the squid adobo. They stir in the, they have inside also the tomato, the, which we call the soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Peanut bed. Yeah, you know the peanut bed, right? The oh, yes. Melon, the squash, and other stuff of the vegetable. And uh -huh. this one is um, chop suey. Uh, the chop suey is a lot of vegetable also. We put the quail egg and a little bit like that, the carrots. Mm -hmm. 
and the sopas, the chicken soup, is uh, the macaroni and also the egg they put in the sabor of the chicken sabor. Okay. Right, and the adobo pork, the killing me softly. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> the soy sauce and the vinegar. All right, that one is a dessert, like uh, the bilu bilu. And also, we put the banana, the sweet banana. That's not deep a dessert. Fried. Deep, deep fried, okay? Deep fried, yeah. Yeah, it's a boneless like that. But this one is, is as a bones. Okay. Okay? And that one is chicken skin, the crispy one. Mm hmm Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That looks good. in a deep fried. Okay? I have also here the sweet... The This one is not the tamarind. And this one is the popular here, the sisig. The chong kawale. Oh. Yeah, they chop chop it and then they put the red bell pepper and the green bell pepper and onion. And this one is a bitter soup, the papa eaten soup. It's a tripe and the beef. Okay, beef okay. and tripe. Yeah, and they put the, see? Yes, I Spicy. see it. Spicy, okay. <laughs> and this one, the popular, the adobo chicken. All right, vinegar and soy sauce. And that one is a pork heart. We call it humba, mm -hmm. the pit pit. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this one is a vegetable, the bitter melon. They put the egg and the tomato. Okay, Alice, so this isn't part of the buffet, right? It's not part. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is this? That's lechon kawale, the uh -huh. crispy lechon kawale. Okay. And this one, same like that, it's a chicken. Uh huh. Chicken is thin, and this one is boneless. Daing bangos. Okay, fish. Yeah, yeah, fish. The milk fish. Okay. Okay, and I have here the sweet tomato, like potato. Sweet potato. Yeah, potato. Which and what's this one? Okay, the chicken empanada, the potato, and the raisin inside, and the chicken inside. The options change all the time. So whatever I showed you in this video is not the same exact 28 items that you're gonna find up there. They're gonna be cooking and replacing new dishes all the time, but that's just a sample of what they have here. And I think for the most part, that's pretty much it. But it all looks so good. And hey, look at this pancit, man. Oh, it's good. It's like a very classic tasting pancit. Like very thin noodles. But you know what I'm really looking at is this, the beef calderetta. Man, that is like a soft beef stew. It's like pillowy soft. Whenever I see these things on the menu, buffet or not, it's like I'm getting it. I mean, do you guys like beef stew? Because if you do, you should get this. I recognize so many of these dishes, even the pork tocino, yes. Mmm. If you guys have never had a pork tocino before, it's like uh, kind of like eating a thin slice of pork loin, but it's sweet, like sweetly flavored. Now this beef tapa is something that I've had before too. Uh-huh, one of my favorites. So that one is not like the tocino in that it's sweet as a tocino. This one I feel is just a, it's more on the saltier side. Like soy sauce salty, I would say. But look at this garlic rice. Yes, this one, gotta use my spoon to pick this up. It's like garlic flavored. Garlic rice is really some of the most flavorful, delicious rice you can have. If you see that up there, you gotta try it. That's very easy to eat and it's very delicious. Okay, so far I'm digging the food here. Oh yeah, look at how tender that is. All that meat, I can't really describe what that curry is like exactly. It's not like Thai curry. It's not really like Japanese curry either. Maybe a little bit like Indian, I would say, but it has a tremendous flavor. This is not part of the buffet, but I heard it's pretty good here, so I got it. The lumpia uh, egg rolls, like Filipino style. And that one is the turan, which is uh, like a banana, jackfruit inside, deep fried. So it's sweet and crispy from what I heard. 
this lumpia comes out really smoking hot from the kitchen, so you gotta be careful. It's always good when it's that fresh. I heard it's one of the popular things here, so you should definitely get it. It tastes great, especially if you come with a group. It's good for sharing. So this isn't just a restaurant. They have groceries here too. It looks like they have a lot of cookies. They have drinks, uh, imported stuff from the Philippines. So you got a little bit of like a mini market going on here. So you don't have to just come in to dine in. If you want to shop for some cool snacks, they got you covered. So if you don't want to do the buffet dine-in, you can do these combo meals to go. You can get anywhere from one to three items. Since it's a buffet, might as well go up and get some more. Oh yeah. It's worth noting they do have regular white rice here too, so not just the garlic rice. And I forgot about this the first time around. Yeah, I knew something was missing. Oh, these noodles look pretty interesting. I'll give it a try. Then some peanut bet. And some of this too. I'm telling you, every time I've been to a Filipino buffet, I always saw something different at every restaurant. So there's never been a restaurant where I thought everything was alike, like not even 90% alike. And this is this Palabo noodles, certainly something I've never seen before. Oh, that's very interesting. It's like very starchy. I can't really describe what that flavor is like. They call it a bee sauce that they use inside of it. I have no idea what that is. But all I know is it kind of has like a shrimpy, a little bit of that chicken stock flavor to it. It's not a tomato flavor. It kind of looks like spaghetti, but it's not. Oh, I like that one. So this time around, you notice I got more veggies because first time around, it was just way too much meat. Yeah, I got to get my veggies too. There's a reason why they call that bitter melon. Because it's really bitter. <laughs> I guess that's how it's supposed to taste like. I suppose you get used to it after a while. This kare kare looks so amazing. I mean, this beef looks just as good as the beef caldereta. Mm-hmm. Don't even need a knife to cut through that. I've noticed that they have quite a bit of beef dishes here, like everything from the beef stew to the beef tapa. I mean, I like beef, so if you guys like beef, I think you're really gonna like this Asian buffet. And this one is called the milk fish. Okay, I always like fried fish. Oh, it's very meaty. There's some bones inside, so you have to be careful. It's soft. It's kind of has like a vinegary flavor too. I really like fish, so if I see fried fish, I'm always gonna get it at a buffet. My turon has finally cooled down, so I'm gonna eat it right now while it's still fairly warm. Mm-hmm. This almost feels like a banana lumpia, you know, like a banana egg roll with jackfruit in. And they glaze it over with some sort of a sweet sauce too, to make it sweet. So it's almost like a egg roll dessert. Maybe I'll end off with some of this. Don't you just love this cafeteria style design? This is the halo halo. It is a famous Filipino dessert. This isn't part of the buffet, but for $7.99 you can get it. And I decided to get it because it looks so good. So you really have to take your time eating this because it's going to take a while for it to melt and for you to really dig into all this. The food is very similar to Cucina Ni Lorraine, the place that I went to last time. Like a lot of the selections I recognize from that restaurant, but I feel that this place probably has a little bit more variety. I mean, it's not as big of a restaurant, but the taste is definitely very good and it seems to be very popular with the locals here. Maybe it might be even a little bit better. And what would a tour to Vegas be without sightseeing on the Las Vegas Strip? This thing goes for about a mile, so it's quite a sightseeing experience. If you go during the summertime, then be sure to put on a lot of sunblock. First thing you definitely need to see is the M&M store. This M&M store is crazy because it uh, is pretty high. It goes for a few stories up. It truly is an M&M factory because they sell merchandise of all kinds here. Everything from cups to keychains to t-shirts 
They got everything. You come up to the second floor, and this is where you can see all the candy on display. Lots of candy on the wall. So if you're an M&M fan, this is your Disneyland right here. So this is the candy dispenser where you grab bags and you're supposed to fill it up with whatever M&Ms you want, and I think they weigh it per pound, something like that. I'm not that big of an M&M &M or candy fan, so I don't think I'm gonna do this, but just letting you know, if you want to, you got a lot here. And up we go to the very top, okay. Wow, look at that, they even have a race car up here. So you're definitely gonna take a lot of pictures up here. I think this is the first time I've seen a race car in a very long time. See, when I look at stuff like this, ah, it's like I wanna buy it. I wanna buy it and take it home. So many things that I wanna buy here. Even if you're not into M&Ms or candy, it's still fun to come in here and take a look at all this because it's colorful, it's fun, it's, it's really uh, big, obviously. And the M&M store is not the only big store here in this facility because they also have a huge Coca-Cola store too. Here's another spot that I used to go to very often and it is definitely worth seeing. So let's go in and check out what's new here. And just like the M&M store, you can find hundreds of items here. Keychains, t-shirts, they do sell Coca-Cola as well. I'm gonna find some of that. So this is the second story up and more or less the same, a lot of gifts all around, good merchandise. These are so nice, it's like I wanna buy everything. Look how vintage this looks. And I do like Coca-Cola a lot. I think it's my favorite soda. This I think is uh, some sort of a light uh, sweater. It's very thin. How much is something like this? Let's see. Oh, yikes, it's like $70, that's crazy. I think I'll skip on this. You know what I'm gonna do since I'm in such a Coke mode, I'm gonna get myself a Coke product. What about one of those Coke floats, eh? They have a pretty cool menu. I wish I had this back in LA too. Fountain beverages, you know, basic Coke, and you got the floats and souvenir cups. They got it all. There it is, the 24 ounce for $4.50. Look how foamy all this Coke is. It's been such a long time since I've had a Coke float. Oh, gotta be careful. See, it's kind of dripping, so you can either drink it or scoop it up because there's ice cream in here, of course. I think it's vanilla. Mmm, that is a classic Coke, Coke flavor. Love it, love it. Oh yeah, I've always been more of a Coca-Cola fan than a Pepsi fan, I'll tell you that. Wow, so delicious. Of course this will be good on a summer day, but even in a winter, it is fabulous. Fabulous to treat yourself to some delicious Coke ice cream. You got a Coca-Cola float. I don't even eat this all the time, so this is so fun for me today. I'm gonna go across the street and check out this uh, hotel that I've never been to before, Park MGM. That used to be the Monte Carlo back in the days. Have no idea what's in there. It looks like it could be a shopping center of some sorts that I'm going into. So I guess everything that I see all around me is Italy, which is a very popular Italian eatery that's even in Los Angeles, Century City Mall. I don't think I've ever been to the one in Las Vegas, so this is very exciting to see this. Yeah, they got everything here. They got pizzas, they got cheese, they got sandwiches. It's like Italian food paradise. You can, of course, do Ubers or you can even do buses. $8 for 24 hours, what a deal. Okay, let me show you just a few other things around the Strip that's pretty awesome. Waldorf Astoria, very high-end hotel. Let me check it out, I haven't seen it before. Well, this is it, this is the 23rd floor. What a, wow. That's quite a lobby, if you ask me. This is seriously a very upscale hotel. Don't know if you've heard about it before. It's one of the most luxurious hotels that you can stay at just anywhere in the world. And I'm pretty sure the rooms are at least a few hundred dollars a night. Uh, I'm not staying here tonight, maybe someday, but I'm just happy being in the lobby and having this great view of the Las Vegas Strip while I can just hang out in one of these chairs. So I'm gonna try to get back onto the Strip, going to cross through this bridge. That's Aria right behind me, it looks so marvelous. Maybe I'll stop by the shops at Crystal's. This is the gateway to Aria, let's do it. Wow, 
wow, this is a mall. Okay. So this is my first time in the shopping mall and this isn't just walking into like a Westfield mall with a lot of casual stores. These are all high-end brands that you'll find like for example on Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive. Oh, they got everything here from Tiffany's to Louis Vuitton to Dior. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I could afford any of this stuff, but still it's fun looking at it. All of this is the exact opposite of shopping at stores like M&M, but there are people who come to Vegas who are extremely rich who can buy stuff like this. Maybe you're one of those people. So this is the mall you have to be at. What in the world is this? Wow, I've never seen anything like this before. It's like a little tornado. 5,000 Swarovski crystal ornaments. What did I tell you? This whole place is bling bling to the max. Impressive. As you can see guys, there's quite a lot that you can do here on the Las Vegas Strip. Every time I come by it, it seems to never get old. You see things that you've seen from the past that brings back memories, and you see a lot of new things in development, so it's a fun tourist place for sure. So yeah, I hope uh, that kind of gives you a little idea of some of the great things to do on Las Vegas Boulevard, whether you're going more for the cheap route or more for the expensive route. Everyone's gonna have a blast here at Las Vegas Boulevard. In the afternoon, I headed to Shang Artisan Noodle, which is Yelp's highest rated Chinese restaurant in Las Vegas. This restaurant makes some of the best house-made noodles in Vegas. Chinese food is a pretty big cuisine in Las Vegas, so no food tour is complete without checking out one of these kind of restaurants. Just be prepared for the long line. Beef pancake is good from what I heard. And then down here, oh yeah, that's the specialty, noodle soup. Everybody gets the Shang beef noodles, so yes, I'm gonna get that. I also heard their Dan Dan noodles are very popular, and then if you are into rice and chow mein, they got you covered there as well. This is an open kitchen, so you can pretty much see them making the noodles fresh right in front of you. Yeah, it starts out with a whole lump of dough, and then he would bang it, he would twist it, stretch it until it becomes the perfect noodle shape, and then afterwards it would go into the water, and it becomes just like, you know, noodles, edible noodles. And I believe that's the broth for the beef noodle soup. Oh yeah, they make a lot of this because this is a bestseller. Man, Woo. look at that. One minute later, it's done. Oh yeah. And then I guess it will cool down, kind of rinse it in some cold water. And it's especially good if they fresh make their noodles in-house. It's always a big plus, so I'm very excited for this meal. This is Las Vegas Phil. He is the expert in food, especially in Vegas. So yes, definitely check him out. He has a really awesome thing going on on TikTok as well as YouTube. All of it is gonna be in the video description, and I'm so glad that he's joining me here. This is really the most appropriate guest because he is apparently the expert in this restaurant. I love this place, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I mean, looking at the spread, I mean, you basically have the greatest hits here, and I'm so excited for you to try it and uh, see what you think. Oh, okay, let's see what we got here. So let's start with the spicy wontons, and what I love about everything here on the side orders is all everything's handmade, silky, delicious, and it's stuffed with pork, super juicy, you mix it up, it's really satisfying and, and delicious. Over here, you got the beef pancakes. Think of this kind of like a thicker skin shaolong bao that's pan fried. They're really juicy inside. I've ruined a couple of shoes eating these because the juice squirts out, but it's a, it's a really great dish and a must have. And if it's your first time at Shang Artisan Noodle, you got to get the classic beef noodle soup. Um, this is what they're most famous for and probably what 80% of the customers here get. Uh, Dan Dan noodles is one of my favorites and we went with the knife shaped noodles. I love how the knife shaped noodles kind of absorb all the great flavors and it features spicy soy sauce and minced pork and scallions. And for the summertime eats, uh, the cold chicken noodle is a great one. Tons of veggies, great shredded uh, chicken on here with a handful of noodles underneath. And uh, that's a really great summertime dish. Uh, these are the pot stickers. So think of these as the boiled dumplings, but they just pan fry the bottom of it. I love the juicy interior and the crispy exterior, and it's just uh, really satisfying bites. I like how the, the is that chili oil that's in yeah. there? Yeah, okay. bit of chili oil. Wow, it looks kind of soupy actually. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, cheers. All right. Mmm. Mm. Love these. Okay, you know what I didn't expect was that. I do taste the spiciness, but then it kind of has like a sweetness to it too. Okay, I'm, I'm trying another one. <laughs> that chili oil, it's, I almost feel like I want to drink it. 
I mean, almost. <laughs> Not really, but... Maybe later. We'll get a Maybe later. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the spicy wontons is definitely something you need to get here. It, yeah, it has my thumbs up. Awesome. I think you should always get wontons or dumplings with noodles, correct? Correct. Complete yeah. the experience. I agree. Okay. I agree. Oh, okay. What about this one? Mmm. Woo. <laughs> Okay, did you see that, guys? <laughs> Splash zone. Inside, the, the meat is just so juicy. You know, it kind of reminds me of something I've had in a Beijing-style Chinese restaurant before? Yes. Those meat pies? Yes. Uh, Shenzhen, they're mm -hmm. called Shenzhen, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like but it's their own version. It's so cute. It's bite-sized. So if you have, like, about one, two, four at the table, everybody could get a piece. Yeah, for the dumplings, you definitely need your soy sauce. And this one, don't forget, guys. Okay, i never seen it done like this before. <laughs> it's almost like a topping. So you break it off, you see that skin, how crispy it is? It's like a cracker. And then what happens afterwards? I do a little dip in here. Okay. How is it? Mm. I can tell you like it. The country, the crunchy top before it gets into the juiciness of the dumpling itself, and then all the spice and vinegar, it's just so good. Okay, that's pretty killer. Good thing about this is that it didn't squirt out. But overall, it's good. It's like very crispy, and I love that chili. That chili sauce is so good. Yeah, you're right. These, these pan-fried dumplings are must-get here. I can see why this, this is so popular. Beef noodle soup time. I heard so many stories about this. And thank you, Phil, for giving me the larger of the two. <laughs> of course, of course. Okay. Mm. So light. Right? Yeah. It's like a very smooth, uh, kind of silky broth we got going on. You know, I see something else. Look at this beef. Yep, nice and tendony. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, wow. You sound like you're just eating here for the first time. It's like the first time every time. I mean, certain staples that I just love over the years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though the menu is kind of simple, they've been kind of tweaking the recipe since the beginning. Oh, um, okay. So, yeah, certain things, just a couple nuances come out, uh, you know, every once in a while that I notice. Okay. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, good flavor. Great elasticity, and it just holds all the flavor so nicely. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. This is the first time I've had beef noodle soup in Las Vegas, actually. Oh, wow, nice. Out of all the times I've come here in the past, I mean, I haven't been to too many Chinese restaurants in Vegas to begin with, but I've never ordered this before in any Chinese restaurant. Very cool. Well, good way to start. Mm -hmm. Good place to start. So here's the other one. This is their Dan Dan Mian, Dan Dan noodles. But this is the first time I've had Dan Dan noodles with knife cut noodles. Is that even a thing? Totally is here, for sure. Okay. And I think for the regulars here, when you've had the Shang uh, beef noodle soup too often, Dan Dan noodles is definitely the next most popular one. Oh, wow. Mm. Love the texture. So good. Okay, I didn't I expect it. that. I don't order Dan Dan noodles that often, but this one, I feel the taste is so good. It, I mean, it is spicy, but I feel it's like a very delicious spiciness. You know what I'm saying? Yep, comfortable. These noodles really soak up the sauce. I mean, it kind of reminds me of chow fun in some ways. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. It's so thick. It's like, I know it, it kind of tastes like uh, eating all this dough in your mouth, but in this case, it, it's like so tasty. Mm hmm. This one is not supposed to be spicy, is it? No. Okay. All right. I need to kind of cool down my mouth a little bit. Actually, this is a good one to, to wrap it up with. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, it's very peanutty. Yeah. And all the spice in my mouth kind of went away after the first bite. Yeah, you're right. Me too, actually. 
I feel that this is kind of the equivalent of, you know that ramen dish, the cold noodle one? Yes, yeah, the that? summer one that they do. Yeah, what yeah. was that one called again? I don't know the Japanese name. I would say that this is a very good noodle dish if you don't want the soup for any reason, especially with summertime on the horizon. This thing, I think, is the perfect one that you should get. Oh yeah. The next day started off with lunch at Sushi Time, which is one of the most popular all-you-can-eat sushi restaurants in Las Vegas. Starting at $26.95, you'll get some of the biggest selections of appetizers, sushi, and hot foods you'll find in any AYC sushi spots in Las Vegas. So if you guys like sushi and you like it all you can eat, then sushi time is always a good time to visit. Just decided to get takoyaki, popular Japanese street food. I love it. Shrimp tempura to add the crunch to the all softness of the sushi. Now here's a very interesting one. This is actually part of the all you can eat. This is their Carby short rib special. I didn't get too much because I don't want to fill up on it, but I heard it's super popular here. And also the baked mussels, which is a timeless appetizer in all you can eat sushi restaurants. Mm. Baked mussels, always very tasty. I love the flavor of that mayo that's on it. Mm, it's kind of sweet too. I think this is the first time in a while I've had takoyaki in a uh, sushi restaurant, all you can eat. Mm-hmm, mm, that's very good too. I think I'm more into the takoyaki that's deep fried. It's not a traditional way to make it, but still, I mean, any takoyaki is good for me. Uh, short ribs, but this is the first time I've seen it offered as part of the all-you-can-eat menu. That's pretty top-notch. Mmm, okay. Very tender, it's sweet. If for some reason you don't really want to eat as much sushi, but you want to balance it with beef, it's it's pretty safe, it's it's good. Yeah, you should definitely get it. Here we go with the nigiri uh, on top. This is not part of the all you can eat, it's part of the a la carte, but it just shows what high quality fish you can get if you're willing to pay separately. The one to the left is kampachi, and to the right is toro. Doesn't that toro look so crazy? Look at the color. And then down here we have Cajun albacore, garlic, tuna, and that's the super white tuna. I've never heard of that before. That's interesting. Yuzu salmon and yuzu yellowtail. Yes, I like anything yuzu. And the great thing about this restaurant is that it's in a huge shopping center with a lot of free parking. So no matter what time of day you come, you're gonna get some awesome parking here. Mmm. I know you're paying a little extra, but if you're willing to pay for it, it's, you're gonna get some quality stuff. But then this Toro, just by the way it looks, I already know this is gonna be pretty good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very melt in your mouth. So it's up to you. If you're content with the rolls and the standard nigiri, by all means, go for it. I got a lot of that actually. But if you want to try some of their special a la carte items, which they don't have in too many all you can eats, yeah, you should definitely try it. That seared albacore looks pretty crazy. And it looks like with some of these nigiri, they already have some sort of sauce on top. So you don't really have to dip it in soy sauce, I guess. Crispy onions on top, which is always pretty good. Very tasty. I don't remember if I've ever had this one before. This one is gonna be like a new discovery to me. Mmm, oh, it's good. Doesn't even taste like tuna. I mean, it's not exactly like a yellow tail either, but you should definitely try it just for the sake of trying something different. I mean, it's not as elevated as that Kaiseki restaurant I went a few days ago, but still, for all you can eat, for $30, definitely hits the spot. Yuzu salmon tastes just like regular salmon, but with that yuzu flavor, which is so good. Yellowtail is one of those things that I feel you always have to get, like a top five item at sushi restaurants. 
And here are the rolls. And what's really interesting about the rolls here is that you can order half so you don't have to get full off of eating the whole thing, which is very considerate. To the left is called something 69. That's very interesting. You're gonna find a lot of these types of rolls. This is a shrimp tempura, soft shell crab, tuna, whitefish, salmon. And that one to the right, let's see, is the um, taste my girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. Shrimp tempura, cucumber, avocado, spicy crab, scallop. Oh, a lot of good stuff. And this one is a popular one from the baked roll section, baked lobster roll. Once again, half order, crab, avocado, baked lobster, uh, crunch, and eel sauce. Me personally, I'm more of a sashimi and nigiri type of person, but since I'm at an all you can eat, I mean, it's like you, you just have to get the rolls. That's really the only occasion that I eat this. That's like a mouthful. Yeah, there's shrimp tempura and there's soft shell crab in there. This one looks pretty interesting. Taste my ex-girlfriend. I don't know, how do they come up with these names? It's so creative. I guarantee you, you'll never find it anywhere in Japan. Yep, so that one is filled with a lot of crab too, especially on top. And there is uh, shrimp tempura in this one. You know, after a while, I kind of can't really distinguish the flavor of some of these rolls because even the taste my ex-girlfriend was, it tasted very similar to the Something Wrong 69. I mean, there are some differences, but you know, I'm just eating it and just enjoying it. This one's very tasty. All that baked lobster with the eel sauce and the rice. I think this one probably is my favorite of the three rolls. This one I think is most my type. With the $31.95, you get one piece of raw oyster, but you can upgrade from the a la carte menu. You get a half dozen oysters for $18. You get all this beautifully presented. Mmm. Wow, that's fresh. Yeah, that is as fresh as it gets. So clean tasting, and the uh, sauce that they put in, I think it might be like a ponzu sauce. It's so bright when you eat this. And like I said, if you pay the all day price, you get one of these. So it's limit one per customer. But if you want to get more, I believe it's $1.50 extra. You can order the half dozen, you can order the uh, full dozen, but this is definitely worth ordering here. It's very good. And you surely need to get your carpaccio here. That one is the albacore. And this one is the salmon. Also got some unagi freshwater eel, always a must get for me. Some octopus, that is ikaro, which is salmon egg, and that is scallop. How about we start off with that seared uh, albacore? Anytime you add the crispy onions on top, I'm always gonna like. Man, this salmon carpaccio, look how creamy it is, wow. That one's pretty interesting. Salmon, but then it has like a citrusy type of creamy sauce over it. I am not a competitive eater, so when I go to these buffets and all you can eats, even me, I have a limit. So I think I might be done after round number one, but not before I had my freshwater eel, uh-huh. Anything eel with that eel sauce, it's like, I'm always going to get it. I like the addition of the lemon wedge on top, giving it that sourness. Really nice. And then salmon egg is one of those things that you should always order because usually when you go to an a la carte sushi restaurant, it's pretty pricey. So I think you should get it here. Very pleasant tasting, not too salty. So this is pretty good. And this scallop looks like they kind of cut it into small pieces in here. Mm, it's good. That one has good flavor, actually. But overall, having a very fun time here. And I'm going to end off with this. This is their tonkotsu ramen. Yes, apparently they have ramen on the menu. And I heard that this is something you must try here. 
That broth is very soothing. It's tasty. I mean, I wouldn't say it's as rich as some of the other tonkotsus that, that I've had. But then again, those are ramen restaurants. They specialize in that. So no comparison. But still, this broth, wow, it's good flavor. Oh, man. But then the noodles is really where it's at as well. So. Okay, I know this is not a ramen restaurant, but you should definitely try this here. Yeah, those noodles are so pleasant too. Oh, really? And I think it's so appropriate that I'm eating this all the way at the end because usually in Japanese like horse meals, when you get rice or noodles at the end, that means you're pretty much done with your meal. Later that night, it was on to one of the best buffets in Las Vegas at Ace Buffet at Palms Casino. This is one of few all-you-can-eat buffets that serve whole lobsters, which is only available on Wednesday and Thursday nights. For $65 a person, you can have it all. I'm telling you, this is really one of the most extraordinary buffets that you're gonna find in Las Vegas. Especially if you love lobsters, seafood, then you simply cannot miss this restaurant. All right guys, so this is Jessica. She is the chef here at AYC Buffet. She's gonna show us everything that's on this buffet line. Yes. All right, Jessica, so what do we got here? Here's our little Mediterranean bar. So we have our fatouche salad right here. Then moving over, we have our baba ganoush. Yes. Yeah, then our tabbouleh salad and our hummus, all made in-house. In nice. And then Mediterranean continues. Yeah, then we have our pita bread to go along. And then we do a, a crispy chili soy tofu. Our version on our chop suey. Chop suey? Chop suey, yep. Oh, okay, a lot of vegetables. All vegan, yep. And then we do here wild rice. And this is our jackfruit bulgogi bowl. Ooh, you, yeah. did you say jackfruit, jackfruit bulgogi bowl? Jackfruit bulgogi bowl. And then we do our roasted Brussels sprouts with a pomegranate syrup. This is our world pan station, and we have our Thai cucumber salad here. Our seaweed salad. And then we do an ahi tuna pokey right over here. Okay. And we go into some house-made teriyaki chicken wings, vegetable fried rice, and our shrimp yeah. pan set. Right. Moving in, we have our whole cooked lobsters. Oh, this is the main attraction. Yeah. All right, Good I see boys. it. The lobster in the shell. Yes. Okay. Then we have our snow crab legs, uh -huh. served hot, and our lobster tails. Wow, so you got both the tail and, and the whole the lobster whole. in the shell. Yep. Man, that's insane. So coming back here, this is where we put all our lobsters. This wow. Is we pre-pan it into our pans and get it ready to, to be cooked. How many of these do, do you serve? We do about 2,000 pounds of whole and then about 440 pounds, 400 pounds of the lobster tails. Uh oh, there it goes. Then we average about 3,000 in whole tails. Three, the whole cooked lobster. 3,000? 3, 3, wow, three. We do about 200 cases and I get about 15 in a case. So the water is seasoned to oh, give it absolutely. some additional flavor. Almost kind of like Chinese hot pot. Yeah. So every week here we do a raffle for a live lobster cooking. If you win? And if you win, we cook this for you fresh. Either style, we can grill. We like, we will more than likely ask for preferences, or we leave it up to chef's choice. And you get to have this every week. We let, we auction off a live one. That is so awesome. Right? Even more lobsters. And how many of these do you serve every Wednesday? So we do about 4,200 each. So tails. Seriously? Yes, we do about 100 cases, and there's about 42 in a case. So now this is our roastery section where we have our steamed white fish and a soy ginger sauce. Wow. Our smoked ham hocks and greens. Our roasted chicken. Roasted chicken? Roasted oh, chicken. Oh, that looks so good. Yes. Okay. With in house seasoning. Then we do our, our traditional mac and cheese with a breadcrumb. Okay. And our brown butter mashed potatoes. So we nice, we golden brown that butter and then get to mix it in those mash. And Man. let me tell you, those are my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, it's then getting we, better. We do some grilled jalapenos. Uh -huh. And I have some Hawaiian sausage here. 
And then we have an herb crusted prime top sirloin. Nice. House made au jus. Then we do some roasted vegetables here with the herb oil. Uh. Then our corn on the cob, which is in a milky butter. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Wow, look at that. <laughs> and then our go our roasted Hawaiian pineapple with the caramel drizzle on top. So this is our heart station where we do another set of lobster tails and whole lobster, but a little bit different here, we do a butter bath for them. So here we have the whole tails right over here. And then we go into our butter bath where they can request to be dipped in a nice butter bath. It just gives it that extra little butteriness. So you're saying that's butter? That they all love, yep. It's a nice little butter bath. Oh, that's crazy. I've never seen anything like that before mm -hmm. in a buffet. We move over right over here to our loaded ravioli. So we do a white cheddar cheese sauce with it, some bacon, and then a ravioli with ricotta. All right. And then we have our chicken parmesan right back there. Chicken parmesan? Chicken parmesan. Legit. Yeah. And then we have our spicy shrimp. So it's just sauteed shrimp inside of a spicy sauce. Our roasted, here we have our roasted, I don't know if you can see in the bottom, our roasted couscous and salmon with a dill sauce. That looks amazing. And then our sauteed green beans in the back. Then we have a stromboli right over here. Ooh. And then this is our chef's choice pizza. So what we allow our team to do is every day they come up with their own pizza and they're allowed to put it onto this line for us just to give it a nice excitement and creativity to show that. So they, that changes periodically. Okay. And then we have our cheese pizza here. Our focaccia breadsticks. And then our pepperoni pizza. Okay. And then we move into a live action pasta station here where you can get your build your own pasta with shrimp, chicken, sausage. We have bechamel, we do marinara, we have a bolognese, and it's made to order right here and put right onto your plate fresh. Right here, right? Right here. So now we move into our fire and smoke station where we have our mock chow here, which is corn, some sausage that we got in there, some peppers mixed in, and then moving into the back, our arroz verde, which we do a jalapeno puree in it, so that has some kick, and let me tell you, it's amazing. And then we have our black eyed peas and pork right over here. Oh, I see it. Then we have our beef brisket here, which we smoke in-house, and our smokers back there, so every morning fresh. Then we have our beach mushrooms here, which we use for our made to order taco stations, where we also provide carne asada and then the tortillas right in there. Okay. And then we move over to our pork shoulder. This is a pork shoulder? Pork shoulder, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is the barbecue section, yeah. basically. And then we have all our toppings over here. So starting from the back, I have our pickled onions. We do a chipotle salsa, a tomatillo salsa. In the back, our chicharrones, classic barbecue, and then we have a tangy barbecue. We do some limes, a pico de gallo, and then we do another chipotle barbecue. Then we have our cilantro and onion relish, cotija cheese, and our crema, Mexican crema. So now we're gonna jump to our greenery, which is located in the middle of our buffet, and we have our drawn butter here. So you can dip those lobster tails and crab legs in. Oh, seriously? And then we provide a spicy drawn butter. Spicy? Yeah, so this one's got a little bit of a kick in it. Looks like soup. Yeah. <laughs> and then we do our corn chowder here. Whoa, that looks good. We, then we move over to our cold shrimp right over here. We also provide cocktail and tartar. Cocktail, and this is the and tartar, the right? tartar, yes. This is our agua chile right here. Whoa. Our shrimp agua chile. And then we have an artichoke pasta. And then this is our loaded classic potato salad. We do a beet salad with a nice citrus vinaigrette. And then our gemelli salad here. That's a pasta, right? This is our pasta, yes. Which, and also has salami, some cucumbers, some feta cheese, roasted tomatoes, my favorite. And then we go into a wedge salad here. Your classic wedge salad. And then we have mini lettuce chicken wrap bites. Then we do a strawberry spinach salad. Your classic Caesar salad. We do an, an arugula and baby kale mix. And then a mixed green mix. And then we go into our toppings right over here where we have our shaved radishes, some cucumbers, some tomatoes, and carrots. And then we move into our cold crab legs. 
which nice. I have on both sides. So you can find it hot on the world pan, and you can find it cold right here in the salad bar with some lemon wedges. Then we move over to our breads here, and we have our cheese and charcuterie board. Okay, so all of this so is the cheese. cheese. Some fruits, some good cheese. The Kobe Jack, the Pepper Jack, the Brie, the blue cheese. Some bread. Okay, it's all edible, right? It's not yes. props. No, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. These big ones, yeah, but the sliced ones, and then I have dinner rolls right inside. These are the dinner these, rolls. Yeah, these are dinner rolls, which are provided. I have these are my cranberry walnut. We have some rosemary thyme ones, and then right in here we go into plain standard dinner roll. Once again, the menu is not like this every night at AYC Buffet. This is only on Wednesday nights. So if you guys want to know what else they have on the other nights, be sure to go on the website or you can call in. But the good news is that they have free hotel parking and I am good to go with the tub right here and the cracker. Let's do this. It's not as big as Bacchanal Buffet, but I suppose in this case, it's okay because I don't have to worry about trying to eat everything that's on the buffet line. Well, that's a very cheesy mac and cheese. I heard that's one of the chef's favorite. Oh, well, it tastes pretty good. Mm -hmm. Definitely not bad. That's definitely a Mexican inspired dish. I don't eat way too much rice at a buffet and I don't think you should too, but I heard it's one of the highlights here. So definitely gonna go for it. incredibly smoky like it really does taste like a barbecue meat from a barbecue restaurant now texture wise it's not as melt in your mouth or as soft as some of the other ones that i've had in the past but still i mean flavor wise it's very good mm. oh that's good now i heard that they do have prime rib here on another night just not tonight, because tonight is all about the lobster. But if you come and you eat the top sirloin, it has very good flavor. Especially if you pour some of the au jus sauce over it. Mm-hmm. I was right. Yeah, top sirloin is something you definitely need to get here. I wasn't on planning on getting the sausage, but it looks so good, so I couldn't help myself because I do like sausages. Wow, incredibly juicy. This is definitely not amongst the worst of buffets I've had in Vegas or even in SoCal. It's actually pretty good. And I haven't even gone to the lobsters yet. Mmm. Okay, that's a lot better than I thought. Yeah, you're definitely safe with the lobster tail. So this, I can definitely eat more than one of which I am so because I'm gonna get my money's worth here for sure I know this isn't something you should be focusing on at buffets but the hummus it's really good it's like you're so tempted to eat the other stuff when you should be focusing on the seafood and all the very expensive stuff but sometimes I just can't help it I think you just kind of like twist the shell off just like that or something oh okay you see that these are even better than the lobster tails that I've had at all those Asian buffets in Los Angeles and Orange County. The texture is just better, it's just fresher. You're paying $65, but you're actually gonna get some pretty good tasting lobsters. These are like kind of small snow crabs. I wish they had king crabs, so I guess it's better than no crabs. Round number two, got a lot more lobsters and this time I got some snow crabs. Now snow crabs are something I usually eat at buffets because they're usually the top items. You don't find too many buffets that have all you can eat lobsters. I mean, it's very hard to find here and in California. Okay, I mean, they taste okay. Just a little bit on the salty side. I think I'm just gonna take it easy on this. It's just a little too much work for so little meat. Not just one, but two lobster tail and spicy butter. Yeah. Look at that, we got the lobster man right here. <laughs> That's so fun. Did 
Yeah, you gotta have that butter. I would suggest get the spicy butter. I actually think it tastes better than the regular one. You're probably wondering what tastes better, the lobster tails or the lobster in the shell. You know, it's kind of different because I think the lobster tail has more of a softer filet type of taste, whereas the one in here has more of like the taste where it came right out of the sea. Like fresher, I would say. I mean, they both taste good in its own way. Me personally, I think I like this one better, but it just takes a lot of work breaking it open. I think this is gonna be my last round before dessert. Loaded ravioli. I had seven lobsters. I am so lobstered out. I don't think I can eat any more. Oh man. Yeah, after a while, even a lot of the good things, you get kind of sick of it. So I'm just gonna take it very lightly. Very soft. I like it. You see this hummus? I like this so much that I got a second serving. So I guess now you know what is something you should definitely get here. Yeah. I have to get my fruits too. I don't think I've had any fruits on this whole trip actually. Mm. Oh, I needed that. It just tastes so good like towards the end of the meal when you could have stuff like this. Sweet. This is like a cooked pineapple. Very nice. Speaking of fruits, I gotta get my vegetables too. Uh-huh. Those greens are good too. Oh, kind of peppery. Very soft though. I like the very simple things in life, like fruits and vegetables, nuts. But hey, if I'm paying $65, I have no choice. It's like you have to get the lobsters and the expensive stuff or else, or else you're a fool. You came here for no reason. So here we have our sweet and light station where you can find everything sweet. We have our dough soft serve machine with, with dough pineapple and we do a vanilla soft serve. Okay. Then I go into our, those are the cones. Then I have the apple pies. This is our apple pie. We have a s'more brownie mix here and then a peach cobbler. Then we go into our toppings. I have some rainbow sprinkles. And behind it, I have some Oreo, Oreo crumbs and some peanuts. Then M&Ms, some Skittles and some rice peanut butter treats. Then we go into our gelatos. This is where we can find all our gelatos. So starting over there, I have a, mar a mango sorbet, a lemon sorbet, strawberry sorbet, a banana dulce de leche, double dark chocolate, mint chocolate chip, our ube, then our strawberry cheesecake. Then coming down, we have our espresso, our coconut, and our salted caramel. We have pies here, so we have our gluten-free chocolate cake, our lemon cake, then we have our cherry pie in the back, chocolate cream pie, passion fruit tapioca right there, then we have our double chocolate chips, vanilla cupcakes, our cannolis, our chocolate cupcakes, oatmeal raisin cookie, that is our brownie right there. Then we go into our three sister cake. That is like an Oreo mix there. Then we have our tiramisu. Yeah, Napoleon there. Our red velvet cupcake. Our sugar cookie. Our jello shots. Then we move into our strawberry cake. Rice Krispies dipped in chocolate. How fun. Yeah. And then our best seller is our creme brulee right there. Those fly out the window. Okay. Then we have our strawberry cheesecake, our chocolate chip cookie there, our raspberry mousse cup, our lemon meringue, and our chocolate tart. Then down here we have our walnut. It's like a walnut bite. It's very, very tasty. Very addicting those. And then our sugar cookie. I feel that that dessert bar is a whole buffet in of itself. I wish I could spend my whole meal eating there because there's a lot of great choices it looks like. Well, wow, it's very creamy. Okay, now we see why it's popular. It doesn't have that crispy hard shell on top. Everything is soft all around, but it's very good. Of course, there is no perfect buffet, not here in Nevada or in California or anywhere else. 
but I can say that this is definitely one of the much better buffets I've been to in Las Vegas. It's definitely up there along the lines of like Wicked Spoon and Bacchanal. So if you're thinking of coming here, I would recommend it, especially if you love lobsters because you're not gonna find too many buffets around Vegas that specializes in all you can eat lobster tails. They have it here on Wednesday night. So come on by, if you're willing to drop $65, you're definitely gonna have fun here. On the last day, I went a bit north in Las Vegas to Tacos Los Barrios, which is Yelp's highest rated taco truck in Vegas. They got tacos, they got burritos, and other great Mexican foods. So if you're looking for Mexican food that is casual, pretty affordable, and very tasty, Tacos Los Barrios is one of the most authentic taco trucks that you're gonna find in Vegas. This is such a tight little kitchen. I think this is one of the smallest food trucks that I've been in but they got so much going on in here. Everybody's working fast to get out the uh, quesabiria tacos, a very comprehensive menu. Wow, I'm impressed. Oh, there's all the meats, all the beef that's going into that consomme. You see, they got it all ready, good to go. What do we have here? They got some rice and some beans. And those are jalapenos, and let's see, that one is definitely beef, the carne. That one is the chorizo. Yes, my favorite. Wow, they even have burrito birria here too. I think this is the first time I've seen this. That's pretty awesome. This is the quesadilla de barrio, which is one of the house specialties. It's pretty much a huge loaded quesadilla with different meats inside. Just like with any other food trucks, you order the food at the counter and you would take it to go. There's really not that much outdoor seating here. It's right next to an Arco gas station. Obviously, you're not gonna eat it inside the AM PM, right? Uh, hopefully you have a spot to eat at, maybe in the car. Thankfully, they did have one table lying around so that I can squeeze all of my food in this small little table. Uh, okay, that makes it very easy for me. All right, so excited to start off my day with some awesome Mexican food. Look what I got here. So this one is the Quesadilla del Barrio. This, it has a lot of things inside like cheese, you got beans, and then you can choose your protein. I got the adobada, which is like a marinated pork. I don't know if I've ever had that before. That sounds pretty interesting. And I also got some assorted tacos. Uh, you can get pretty much any taco you want, but I got the beef, which is carne, and that one is the pastor to the middle, and to the top is chorizo, very awesome. My favorite, these are birria tacos. I've had so many of these back in LA. So here they use beef, not goat. Oh, that's okay, I mean, I like beef. And then that is the consomme. You can dip the tacos in or you can drink it. It's fresh, like you can taste it. The tortilla, the beans, there's guacamole inside, there's cheese. Okay, even if I just ended off with this one, I'd be so happy. It's perfect. Yeah, one order is definitely big enough to fill you up because there's two of these, you see? Wow, isn't that so big? This is something you should definitely get here. And of course, tacos, gotta get here. After all, it is a taco truck, right? That's a very good tasting beef taco. I mean, it's nothing terribly groundbreaking, but it's just a very good tasting beef taco. I like it. I mean, you can't go wrong with beef. It's awesome stuff. But then what I like even more are pastor tacos. Oh, my dream taco. Oh, well, that is so packed with flavor. I think the pastor kind of tastes a little bit different than what I've had in Los Angeles because usually I go to the street taco spots where they cut the pastor off the spit that's roasting around. They don't do that here, but still, it's very good. I think this might be my favorite of the three. I mean, all of them taste good in its own way because obviously they're different proteins, different marination, but this chorizo has a good kick to it. Really packed with flavor, yikes. 
and definitely be sure to drizzle the lime juice over it because that adds even more flavor, like makes it pop. As if my three tacos were not good enough, here we go with the Birria taco. Oh yeah, I'm gonna drench it with all of this consomme. Here we go. Like juicy and uh, the cheese, crispy. Mmm. Yeah, pretty solid. And the consomme, you can drink this as well. Don't be shy. Ooh. Oh man, that's pretty good. But you know what I think would make it even better? Is if you squeeze some of that lime juice inside, the acidity to really make it like jump out in flavor. Wow, even better. Yeah, definitely had the lime juice because that thing is gonna make it like super delicious. Definitely get the birria tacos here. They taste really good. I mean, it's not the best birria tacos I've had in my whole life, but it's definitely good enough to order it on the menu. I mean, all around, I'm just very happy. They call it the campechano because there's a lot of meats in here, like carne, pastor, chicken, uh, chorizo, adobada, and of course you see there's a lot of other stuff like jalapeno, uh, cheese, uh, guac, Oh yeah, sour cream. And here is my last one. This is uh, birria ramen, which I heard is also very popular here. And of course I've had this in Los Angeles too. Look at all that meat inside. Man, look at this, this is so loaded. This could be another meal in of itself. Mm-hmm. Okay, that works. I know it's not the healthiest thing in the world, but man, these things taste so good. Don't get me wrong, I think that the fries taste good as well, but something about crunchiness in chips mixed in along with all of these sauces and proteins and cheese just makes it a knockout. Wow, like a flavor bomb in your mouth. Mmm. Oh man. Yeah, so these are something you have to eat pretty quickly because nachos are not really that great later on. So hopefully you have a big appetite and you can just kill this whole thing right on the spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should definitely get it. I think the birria ramen's just about done. I had to wait just a few minutes for the noodles to cook. Wow, very tasty. But then again, it's birria and it's consomme. Of course it's gonna taste good. I think maybe I let the noodles sit a little bit too long because it is pretty soggy. So maybe next time, uh, maybe a minute or two less. But this is really good instant noodles because it's not just the noodles. We got the birria itself and the consomme, which you drink. Oh, it's like a really feel good noodle dish. It combines the best of Mexico and Japan right here. And immediately after, I made a stop at Shaken Crab, which is located in Chinatown. This is one of few seafood restaurants that offers all-you-can-eat seafood boil. Beginning at $60 a person, you can go all out with this seafood boil. As you can see, the all-you-can-eat experience comes in so many different forms in Las Vegas. So if you guys are into seafood boil and you want to do it all-you-can-eat, then Shaken Crab is certainly a place you can do it. Well, look how much corn is going in there. <laughs> And then also the potato and eggs. Man, that's a lot of eggs. This is where they're boiling everything. And it looks like they compartmentalize the seafood according to, oh, I'm not really too sure. Is it according to the seafood or stock or something? All right, yeah, that's the lobster. Oh man, that is so huge. That's the king crab. And that is the Dungeness crab, uh-huh after a few minutes and when that's done, they're gonna dress it up in the plastic bag with the sauce, the spices, shake it up and it's ready to serve. So all of this is round one and I have a feeling this might be my last round because I got so much food here and I wanna let you know that I did get some stuff that's part of the a la carte menu that's not part of the all you can eat just because I had to, they look really good. In the all-you-can-eat, you can get everything from the shrimp. You see the shrimp? 
and the crawfish and even add in some corn and they add snow crabs, which is limited. I wanna stress that. And mussels, clams, and let's see. Oh yeah, that's the big Alaskan king crab market price. Yeah, I added that on. And I also added on the $64 lobster, the whole lobster. That is not part of the all you can eat, but this is the Dungeness crab. And I heard that is pretty good here. You know what, maybe I'll go ahead and start with the shrimp. I don't know which one of the four sauces is the best, but anything that says house on it, I think probably you should just go with it. Mmm. Okay, that sauce definitely works. Uh, so far, medium spicy is not that bad actually. Maybe I could have gotten hot, but yeah, not, not today. I just want to kind of take it easy on that. I like clams because they're bite-sized and they're very easy to eat. Just like the mussels, same thing. Very easy to eat, just pull it out. Man, that sauce is pretty strong. Here in the Chinatown location on Spring Mountain, they have a lot of free parking out there. So have at it, guys. This is the first time I've had a boiled egg in a seafood boil restaurant. Every time I go, it's the corn, it's the potato, the sausages, which is good by the way, but boiled egg, yeah, that's, this is something you definitely need to add. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, corn will come with it. It always does. It's, it's really typically part of a seafood boil. And on the menu, you saw that they do have their soups. This is the lobster bisque, which is one of my favorites. Haven't had it in a seafood boil yet, but I always like anything lobster. Wow, it's really creamy. It almost kind of tastes like a uh, clam chowder in some ways, you know, that thick, gooey creaminess, but with more of a lobster flavor. Mm. And a little bit sweet too, I like it. Appetizer scallops, these are the fried scallops, another one of the hit items here. And just letting you know, if you want more sauces, they can give it to you. Oh yeah, I can dunk it all in here, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a fried scallop like this, you know, breaded like this. I've had fried shrimp that was like this, but never fried scallops. Oh, I see a little octopus as well. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it tastes very nice all around. So definitely get your octopus too when you come to seafood boil. Mm-hmm. And even more appetizers. Uh-huh, it looks pretty good, huh? That's the fried catfish. I don't think I've had this in a seafood boil restaurant. That's pretty awesome. And then that is the chicken wings. You can get it in many flavors, but I'm pretty old school. Buffalo with that ranch sauce. And that's the cheese jalapeno poppers, which I heard is also popular here. More ranch sauce, the way to go. I always have to get this every time I come to one of these type of restaurants. This is like your very traditional tasting buffalo wings. Ranch sauce always makes it even better. And like I said, you can get these in many flavors. It doesn't have to be buffalo, but I just got buffalo because that's always like my go-to thing. Is it yours too? This is pretty awesome. The catfish, yeah, put it into that tartar sauce. Wow, okay. I think this catfish is one of my favorite things here. Fish is so tender, it melts in your mouth and the cornmeal mix over it. It just bites so perfectly. Yeah, this is even as good as the catfish I've had in a lot of a la carte restaurants that make this, believe it or not. Yeah, you should definitely get this one here. I'm like so tempted to get more of this. That's how good it is. Mm -hmm. And then just as impressive I heard is the garlic noodles, okay. And I think this is the first time I've had garlic noodles in a seafood boil restaurant. Mmm. Very garlicky. These kind of also have like a soy sauce taste to it, kind of. 
you need to dunk it in this. <laughs> Okay, I think that's kind of overload actually, but whoa, very strong. I need to switch gears. Now I got to go back to my vegetables. Potato time. Mm hmm. Mm. Wow, that's good. Always got to have your potatoes. Yeah, take my advice. Put it in all that sauce. It really makes it taste better. These jalapeno poppers are also something that I don't think I've had in a restaurant like this before. Mmm. All right, they're tasty. Well, I mean, it's just kind of what you expected. It's cheese inside, jalapenos, and it's crunchy all around on top. These are very good for sharing. And I saved the best for last. Uh, that's the uh, snow crab. Okay, there's a little bit of meat up there. But the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to... Uh, uh, okay, something like that. Okay, I did the best that I could, you see? And then uh, sauce it up. Very simple. What can I say? It's crab. Crab is always good. Like I said, there's a limit to these, but if you want to order more from the a la carte menu, definitely get a lot of these. Okay, this is pretty awesome. This is something I've not had in a seafood boil. This is not all you can eat. I mean, it would be pretty cool if it was, right? But uh, you can get this from the a la carte menu market price. Okay, almost a clean break. I see it. This thing is super expensive but it tastes so good. See, I like it because there's a lot of meat. See that? That to me makes a very enjoyable crab experience. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. And I want to stress once again, not part of all you can eat, but uh, I heard you should get it here. See, it's as simple as that. Just twist it and break the tail right off. Yeah, dunk it. Garlic butter. Maybe I overloaded on the sauce, actually. It just seemed very fun, because that's what a lot of social media people do. But hey, lobster's a lobster. Mmm, crunchy. That is the Dungeness crab. Oh yeah, this is really good stuff. I don't exactly know how to break this. That's <laughs> why I have some help. Ooh, Dungeness crab is really good too. It tastes kind of different than the snow crab. I don't know how to quite describe it. I just think it kind of has some, um, there's more flavor, I would say, in the Dungeness crab. Well, obviously it's a more expensive crab. Of course, I can't say that it's on the same level as going to an a la carte, really nice seafood restaurant, but for $60 for all of this of what you get, it's definitely good enough. I mean, I can see myself coming back here and enjoying this meal. Well, there you have it with my epic 72-hour journey to Las Vegas. Have you been to any of these restaurants or any of these sightseeing spots? Drop that comment because I would love to hear your story. Anyways, thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of this video. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next food adventure.